Hi, welcome to Knits Up. I'm Mindy, your hostess, otherwise known as Knitter CNY. You can find me on Ravelry at, and Instagram as Knitter CNY. I wanted to let you know about a special video episode that I did. I have a YouTube channel that is, if you look up, go to YouTube and look up Knits Up Podcast, you will find it. Um, you will also find links from, I think, Libsyn takes you there. Um, my Instagram should take you there. I'm not really sure if it does or not. I should probably put that up there. That would help. Um, but I do. But anyways, I did post a rather lengthy video podcast. I think it goes for almost an hour. I hit the Hobby Lobby clearance sale. If you're interested in yarn hauls, some people are not um, because it's me going, here, look what I bought. Here, look what I bought. But I'm kind of happy about all the yarn. Um, I probably bought a lot of it because I haven't really been yarn shopping per se other than other other than online, really. Um, a few weeks ago when I went to Joann's with a friend was the first time I've been inside a store um, really shopping for a long time other than going in with getting groceries. So I've recorded that. Um, there are five wardrobe changes for summer sweaters that I've knit over the years. And so you'll see all of those. Um, you can also find those on my um, Ravelry page. I know Ravelry isn't working for a whole bunch of people, so um, because of the issues with accessibility on it, and I totally understand if you don't go there. Um, this week has been kind of a quiet week. I finished up a couple of hats and then put in my hats all in a box and mailed them to Lion Brand Yarn in New Jersey for hatnothate.org. Um, they collect blue hats and do an anti-bullying campaign in a lot of schools, mostly down in New York City. That's where it started. Um, but you can find all of all the information about that at hatnothate.org. Um, my next, I don't want to say charity knitting, but my next non-selfish knitting will be um, hats for our local rescue mission. They're an organization that deals with homeless in the Syracuse area. Um, last year, what they did was um, you could donate your hats, gloves, mittens, scarves to the local Dunkin' Donuts. And then they would serve as a collection point. And then those were collected for people who were using rescue mission services in Syracuse. And then they were distributed that way. So I made a whole bunch of... Um, chunky weight hats last year for that appeal. I think they usually collect them in January-ish. So I'm going to do that again because I bought a bunch of chunky weight yarn and I have chunky and bulky weight yarn. Um, I do a double brim hat that's a free pattern that somebody put out. I can't remember who it was, but um, you get the general idea. So, um, and the other thing I've got to work on start actually is I have all the yarn for it is a Bernat Pipsqueak toddler blanket because my a family member's kid has a baby blanket out of Pipsqueak and is obsessed absolutely obsessed with it won't go to sleep without it carries it around so that baby is no longer a baby but is a toddler now um, going to be two I believe and so I wanted to make a bigger blanket because the kid is not obviously a baby and is not short anymore um, so I've got to start working on that I have a whole bunch of I have two big balls of pipsqueak from the Bernat well, from the Yarnspirations tent sale that was at the Spin Rate Factory outlet in Listowel, Canada, about three years ago that I went over the border to. 
Um, it was a vacation where I went to Niagara Falls and then I headed north without a working phone. Um, I downloaded directions to Google and worked offline off the towers because my American phone didn't work up there. And I was dumb and didn't know that you could just like walk into Walmart and buy like a little $30 phone and change the SIM card and then it would have worked. And when I accidentally, when I was going, I accidentally checked avoid major highways. So I was going through this very interesting valley um, that was a flat plain that we had a lot of wind turbines and it was very pretty, very pretty, but going from McDonald's to a McDonald's, I've never been so excited to see a McDonald's in, I think it was, the place was called Gelf. Um, that was like civilization to me. I've never been so excited to see a McDonald's in my life. We're talking like 20 to 30 miles of a two to four lane road with ranches on either side that had dirt roads going to them they were the just it was a huge valley and these giant wind turbines and it was very 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 outside of my experience so i learned a lot that day um and if i get back to canada i'll know to um have a phone that actually works um because that was kind of frightening the fact that i wasn't going to be able to call anyone if there was a problem um, interestingly enough. So, um, that's way diversion, but anyways, so I went to the big ball sale and I bought four big balls of pipsqueak in the sit and pretty colorway. And I used two of them for the baby Afghan. And then, so I have two left. I've ordered and have, um, a bunch of white, um, pipsqueak because I didn't know if the kid likes pink or purple and I didn't want there to be a whole well I hate this because I know I was like that at that age um if it was my favorite color it was my favorite color if it was not my favorite color oh there was no there was no dealing with me so I thought white is the background color that will nobody goes oh my favorite color is white so I thought that would be a like a neutral color so that's what I'm going to use. I don't know what pattern I'm going to use yet. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the other thing that I'm waiting for, and it's sort of become an obsession now, is there is a yarn by Bernat that must be on a slow boat from China or some other country. And they don't know when they're going to get it through. Um, all I can tell you is since July, I've been looking at a listing that was on Joann's for a new Bernat yarn called Plentiful. It's a acrylic, I can't even remember exactly what the mix is, but it kind of looks like a mohair, only it's, some of them are solid colors and some of them are like space dyed. So it looks really cool. I want to make a sweater that they put a pattern out for um, that is a top-down pattern. Now, get this. The yarn is $19.99 a skein. I think it has like 900 yards or something like that. It works up as a chunky weight, I believe. So you're using like a 10, US 10, US 10 and a half needle, which I think is a 6 millimeter into 6.5 and it looks so cool but according to this which I have severe reservations about but we'll see how this goes um, anything from a extra small to a 4 to 5x only takes one skein of yarn for this pattern now I tend to doubt this but We'll see how it goes. Um, if I have to buy another skein, I will. And I probably will buy a second skein just to be on the safe side because, you know, dye lots and new yarn and all of that. So 
Yarnspirations has the listings up for a whole bunch of patterns, for a couple of patterns. Joann's has listings for more patterns. So I think, and what I've been told by customer service at both places, and I think Yarnspirations uh, said it better, was Yarnspirations said, it's going to be an exclusive yarn that will be only shown at Joann's, sold at Joann's. Joann said, okay, there was a listing, then the listing disappeared. Now the listing has come back. They have all the pretty colors up there, but they have no idea. She said there's no date for when it's going to be in the stores. The other interesting thing is that at the Yarnspirations website, that particular sweater, it says, oh, shop the kit. Okay. So I look, there's no pictures of the yarn. It just says select colors. So like you can download the free pattern, but you can't see the yarn or select the colors. So it's like they're all set up for this yarn to come out, but nobody can tell me when it's going to come out. It's So that's my thinking of it's on a slow boat from somewhere. Metaphorically speaking, it could be sitting in a warehouse for all I know. I have no idea. But I really, really want this yarn. So it's kind of an obsession now because it, I, and it's funny be, that it's called plentiful because I think the idea is that, oh my gosh, it's a little ball of yarn. Why would I pay $20 for this? Well, it makes the whole sweater. So I really, really want to make this sweater. I don't know what color I want to make it in. I do know I want a space dyed color. So I want to see how they look. It kind of reminds me of the old. Peyton's lace colors some of them um there's like a flaming kind of a color that reminds me very much of a Peyton's lace color it's sort of dyed that same way um so we'll see how this goes I'm assuming it's not as thick it looks to be thinner than Peyton's lace was um but we'll see um Peyton's had mohair in it, and I don't believe this has mohair either. It's mostly acrylic. It might have a little bit of wool in it. I'm not really sure. Um, I'll try and link to the actual listing somewhere, um, because I think this is going to be a great yarn, but I don't know how widely it's going to be available, and I really want to get some, because Joann's has coupons all the time. So, I mean, I'm not going to pay $20 Total. I'll pro there'll probably be a coupon on it, or when they get it in stock, they'll always put it on sale, and there'll never be a sale coupon. Could be that too. So I don't know when it's coming in. I'm assuming maybe sometime in September. That you know, it would seem illogical to put up patterns for it and not have it come out. So that's my minor obsession. Um, the other thing I've been working on is dishcloths. Um, I did a couple dishcloths yesterday. There was a full nine inning Yankees Mets game, and there's going to be a double header today. Um, so I had some dishcloth cotton and I had some time. Today's stuff is probably going to be, um, a combination of dishcloths slash scrubby yarn. Uh, Red Heart Scrubby is a polyester yarn that I put in combination with um, like uh, the Sugar Wheel Cotton Minis from Hobby Lobby that I bought a few of. So yesterday I had to go to Walmart and pick up a little bit of groceries. So I picked up some um, Scrubby, you know, put my mask on in and out quick as I could. So I have a couple solid colors of that. I also have from some scrubby from back in the day when I was before the pandemic and I was at the dollar store. They had this really ugly pink color. So I have some um, some of that that I can use too. Um, and then I have a, so it's, I have turquoise red um, pink. That's not really bright pink. It's sort of like a pink, like you paint to calm a kid down kind of room. I don't know that color. You know, like a chalky pink, I guess you'd call it. And then I have a bluish color that has is a multi that I have half a ball of. 
And you don't really need all that much because you're not making a solid dishcloth out of the polyester. I'm just putting it with the cotton because then you can use it as a um, dish rag that scrubs. And it's cheaper to do it that way than it is to buy scrubbing and cotton yarn together. Things do like that exist. Um, I think Lily makes one sugar and cream or something like that um, that alternates between the scrubbing and the cotton. So other than that, I don't really know what's going on. Um, I need to get dressed, take a shower. I think what I'm going to do is go over to the... Um, I'm either going to mow my back lawn um, at my house or I am going to go over to the um, lock 23, which is near my residence. Um, that's along the barge canal and it goes into the Oneida River, which flows by my house. And then it goes into Oneida Lake, which is also near my house. Um, but this is a working lock because um, the height of the water for the river and the lake versus the canal is different, so they have to use the lock to lower and lower or oh, lower or raise the boats. So, and it's one of, I think they said it's one of three locks along the canal system that still uses this original lock house built back in the day. I want to say like back in the 1900s, maybe or so. Um, New York State's kind of weird. We have a lock system that goes across the state. We used to have an Erie Canal system that went completely across the state. You probably the, heard the old song from Albany to Buffalo. Um, that was how we transported goods back in the day when DeWitt Clinton was the governor of New York State because they called it Clinton's Ditch um, because people made fun of them because it look like a big ditch and but eventually it worked and we transported goods that way um it's not used to transport goods as much anymore although as a kid I do remember there being barges on it it was um more cost efficient back then to do stuff like that the last big thing that I did see transported was a few I think it was last summer the Genesee Brewery out in Rochester needed to transport some specialized tanks and they transported them up from the Hudson River um, through the locks to um, Rochester. So when they stopped in Brewerton, we, there was a crowd of about 50 to 100 people at this little tiny park all watching um, these tugs transport these tanks. I mean, it was really interesting because it was a double tug and they, you know, finagled it. So, you know, one part would go in the, um, would go in the lock that got, you know, and then they separated it. It was a whole complex thing. And the, the guys were from Louisiana. Um, some of the guys on the crew were from Louisiana that transported it. And we, there was like clapping and hooting and hollering when they got through. He's like, it's the weirdest thing. He's, I don't know how you, uh, he's, he says, I do this all the time, you know, down in Louisiana, you know, we work at the big ports and we transport all of this stuff. He goes, nobody thinks anything of it. He goes, this has been like an event coming through all these places. There were like hundreds of people at every single stop that were just watching this totally mesmerized because it's something new and unique. Um, so the Genesee Brewery has these new um, tanks and it was pretty, pretty interesting because they were custom made and they were too big to go along um, a highway. It would have been too cost prohibitive to send them that way. So that's my little bit of interesting. Otherwise, it's just watching the boats and the jet skis go and some kayakers go in and out. Um, we've done that for years. Um, it's pretty um, standard. Um, I kind of take it for granted because people 
Um, when they're from out of town, it's something novel. Um, it's a unique area because we're so close to the water. Um, I've always tried to sold, sell this place for vacations because if you fish, um, if you hunt, um, if you are just looking for a pretty place to go sit and have a cottage, um, we're not the Adirondacks. We do have some hiking. We have natural trails and things like that. We have playgrounds. We have stuff to do with kids. There's state parks around this area. Um, but if you're looking for a nice place to settle in for a week and rent a cottage and kind of hang out and fish and, you know, have some decent food and stuff like that, we can oblige you. Um, I know it's getting confusing um, New York State is very highly regulated right now due to the coronavirus. So maybe next summer when hopefully this is all over with. This summer's been kind of a bust. Um, I haven't really had a vacation. Um, I've been working 45 hours a week at the lab. I work as an environmental at an environmental lab as a secretary. So I've been working there 45 hours a week this summer because this is our busy season. So it'll calm down soon, hopefully. Um, but I haven't really had a vacation, so that's how I justified the Hobby Lobby purchases, was I haven't had a vacation, so I'm spending one night of hotel money on yarn, um, which was actually less than I would have spent for a hotel. So I've got that. Um, I've also got... Um, a yarn stash to reorganize at some point. It's probably going to rain this afternoon, so that'll be probably what I do um, during the game and such. I'll sort through um, yarn as well and kind of photograph and put that up and catalog it. And I've got a double wide closet that I'm going to stick that all into because it's taking up too much room in my computer room. So that's what I've got, folks. Um, I hope that you have had a good week. Um, the only other thing that's new in my world, and only because I was a subscriber and I own a bunch of forever classes, is that um, the Blueprint Craftsy transition is happening this weekend, next week. Um, I saw there was a video that they, TN Marketing put up who are the new owners of Craftsy um, when... NBC Universal had bought Craftsy. They had rebranded it as Blueprint, B L U P R I N T. And then a few months ago, they announced that they were going to be, they were going to try and sell it or something, or they were going to spin it off. They didn't want it anymore, probably because they were making money from it, but they were going to get a new streaming. Um, service called Peacock that's free and then there's subscribers on that um, but that's for general content the hobby market is a very specific market and there's less people on that now you think it would be more during the pandemic they could have like but I think people were you know not having jobs and were not paying for content they would go to YouTube to look for something to learn a craft rather than go to um Crafts your blueprint and buy a class. So I think that's why they decided to spin it off because more people home, you can make, make more money from ads on content that you already own. So TN Marketing bought this Craftsy. They're bringing the brand back. Um, they did some screenshots of the um, website that'll be going live on September 1st. They will be honoring the keeping the forever classes, which I know is going to cost them a bunch of money. But um, the other thing is you can market to everybody because you have everybody's personal information. So I think they're going to try and market to people, which is fine with me. That's marketing is in their name. Um, they're talking about having when the having live events and traveling events for people that are part of the community. There was also really one interesting tidbit that was mentioned in one line of the podcast. 
um, one of the partners of TN Marketing, who's an older gentleman, I didn't catch his name, mentioned that there were going there was going to be a new knitting community forming in November. So I don't know what that means. I don't know whether they mean they're competing with Ravelry. Are they um, deciding that the knitting is a bigger part of Craftsy and they want to um, have an offshoot of that that will have their own specific content? I don't know what that means. Um, so it's kind of a watch this space kind of thing because, of course, I would be interested in that. Ravelry's been a little tumultuous, to say the least. Um, I have no problem with anybody over at Ravelry because I've never had to deal with anybody over at Ravelry. I just use the thing. Um, and when they switched over to the website, the new website, I didn't have neurological issues Um I, but there were a bunch of people that did. There were everything from migraines to seizures to vertigo to all sorts of issues. And the response to that was not professional, in my opinion. Um, there was trying like hell to deal with it, but there was a also... Um, lack of continuity in the messaging that was going out to the point that now Cassidy, who had been Casey, Cassidy, who is one of the founders of Ravelry, was actually pulled off all social media, is only doing content development, um, coding type of thing, and will have no interaction with anybody on who's a subscriber to Ravelry which is interesting to me. Um, it was sort of like, okay, this person is not in a place where they can deal with everything. There's too much. So that was a good decision on their part. I wish it had come earlier. Um, there was a lack of, I think probably because there are so many subscribers, I, but they're not really subscribers because it's a free service. But there are so many members on Ravelry that there is um, only so much you can do with, I think it's a five or six person team. And while they were at it, there was a whole bunch of disability advocates who rightly said, hey, your website isn't really that accessible. And we've been trying to push for this for a while. And then you did a changeover and like things like screen readers didn't work um, for people with low vision. They're, you know, so you could read forum posts or something, anything. Um, I have a family member. My dad has low vision. He has glaucoma. So I could totally understand what screen readers are and have been exposed to those. Um, if you never have and you have Windows 10 or an old Windows product, they come with magnifiers and screen, screen readers as part of um, the accessibility to their programs. So um, obviously Microsoft had a whole bunch of other people than just four or five people, five or six people working on a website. So they had to take that in consideration because their products are so widely used. But anyways... So Ravelry appears to be working on that. They're trying to do some more testing features. Um, but the response to that kind of was upsetting to people. And also the idea that somebody would just click on a website, it would be changed after at least 10 years. And then there would be um, just you know, no notice about the changeover whatsoever, not the watch this space. We're going to be having a changeover of the website. Um, nothing. It was just one day it was different. And then there was a lack of understanding that, oh, you can just go in and click this. Well, if you're already having neurological issues, you can't go click anything. But anyways, you get the idea. Um, you've seen all of that stuff about Ravelry. But anyways, I'm using Ravelry for now. Um, 
So it'll be interesting to see how this new knitting community for Craftsy develops. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm, pro I'm assuming it's going to be subscription based so that they can make money or they're going to use an ad model to make money. Um, having all the information about the subscribers to Craftsy and being able to market things to them is a large um, get for that company. They already run a bunch of crafting communities, an RV community, a couple other things as well. Um, so it sounds like they have experience in dealing with groups and websites and that sort of thing. Um, so that should be interesting. Um, they're kind of like learning as they go too because, you know, they're, they're talking about, okay, we're not in a merchandising product selling kind of thing. They're going to sell Craftsy merchandise, it sounds like, but I mean, that's the extent of it. They're talking about partnering with companies, websites to sell linked merchandise. So they won't have like a Craftsy brand of yarn um, unless somebody agreed to make it for them, which, but they're not going to be like warehousing things and mailing things out. Um, so I'm kind of glad I bought the kit that I did right before Craftsy Blueprint sold out because they basically clearanced all their stuff. So I had the, I can't remember who the lady is, but the Fox Paws um, scarf, sweater, Fox Paws shawl, scarf, I think it's a scarf. Um, that was so popular that the Yarn Harlot had done and she brought attention to. And so... I have that class. I own that class. And so I wanted to be able to make the, sh the scarf from it. So I bought a kit and I think it was ridiculously inexpensive. I think it was like 15 or $18 or something like that for wool in all the colors. And it came with a pattern too. So I can go through that class. They, it uses a technique called stacked stitches, which is very much like it's kind of like a hybrid of crochet and knitting is the only way to, I can describe it. Forming some of those stitches, the idea that you can do that. Um, so that should be interesting to see. And I have talked like for half an hour now, more than half an hour. And I'm sorry if I've rambled, but I figured you needed to hear my voice. And like I said, I did the Hobby Lobby uh, review go over to YouTube um, I'm not uploading videos to iTunes it's just crazy um, most people that have Apple products um, have a YouTube app they can go to or they can use Safari the browser to get to YouTube and watch that video if you're interested in that sort of thing I have a whole bunch of videos on YouTube. It's just way more convenient to upload them to YouTube I know that the content is not Easy to play within iTunes because they're different formats But if you want to go over there just go over to YouTube watch the video whatever um, I don't really do too much like tutorials or anything like that. I'm, that's not my focus. It's more of a personal blog, um, kind of thing. I don't have, I used to do more complex audio shows with music and things like that when, um, pod safe music, music alley was a thing you could put in, um, have music and I always ended up with themes somehow that was many many years ago um, music alley doesn't even exist anymore um, I've never looked in to see you know whether rights reverted back to somebody I, you know nobody cares about a knitting podcast that was on 10 15 years ago um, so go look at those if you're interested they're more my sound equipment wasn't great, but I learned to edit on Audacity. This I'm recording on my phone, obviously, sitting in my Lazy Boy in my pajamas. Um, sorry to um, shatter the illusion there for you. Um, I do have a video camera that I did film this on, like a, not a bad um, Logitech 
web camera that has decent recording sound. Um, so we'll kind of see how that goes. Like I said, I got to go take a shower, go get dressed, get out of the house. And then we'll go from there. You guys have a great week. Um, please come over to the Facebook page and comment and say, hey, this is what I want on the podcast. Hey, you know, I like the audio. I hate the audio. I hate the video. Would you do this for a video? Do whatever. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see what you guys want to see. Um, also, if you like this podcast, um, friend me on Instagram or follow me on Instagram, whatever it is, follow me on Instagram because I I mostly post over there. That is highly convenient and easy to use. Um, and those, those um, posts will come up on Facebook as well. Um, I know all of these platforms have issues. Any place where digital content is hosted, has issues. I'm not getting my own website. I don't have the time to program a website. I don't have the ambition to program a website. And I'm not that hugely followed to have a website. I am just me in my little old house with my little old knitting and my little crochet and my very large yarn collection. So um, please follow on Instagram, Facebook, subscribe to YouTube, um, tell your friends, even if they're not interested in yarn, whatever. Um, it's kind of funny because some of the old episodes on the pod on the audio podcast, I've been told that I have a different sounding voice. Um, my friends used to tease me that it was a voice that was appropriate for like, you know, the lady on the telephone who's telling you to calm down, just relax. Here you go. So I don't know what that voice particularly sounds like. I haven't gone back and listened to those in years. Um, because generally that was, you know, just me babbling. So have a great week, guys. I hope that you enjoy your week. I hope that you craft and stay safe out there with the COVID and the flu season. Um, I did get my flu shot and my pneumonia shot this year. I had pneumonia last winter. I do not recommend it. It was not pretty because it was misdiagnosed for a month. That is the most excruciating month I have ever spent. My ribs have never hurt more. Um, I couldn't record. I couldn't do a lot of things. And I was tacking coffee and it was horrible. Um, so I got my pneumonia shot. And um, like they say, wear your mask. Wash your hands. Um, and socially distance. I know it's difficult now, but keep, keep doing it. Keep doing it. We want you around in the spring. Bye.